Ready? Right, here we go. Oh, I don't know what to say. What's going on everybody? Welcome back to my channel, Lionel here. And today I'm gonna be talking about the digital TP3 by FPV Cycle. Roll the intro. This is an FPV cycle TP3 that I put together recently and this thing is a riot. It's a riot guys. I'm gonna talk about how I put this together, what I find good about it, what I find bad about it, and also things that work for me to solve the bad parts and it makes me love this quad even more. In summary, I love this quad. I love this absolutely so much and I think you will love it too. So let's get through it. The parts I use is of course the TP3 frame by FPV Cycle. I'm using the RC in power 1204 5000 kV motors, a Diotone Mamba F411 uh, 25M all in one. Now because this is a digital build, I'm using a naked Cadex Vista with the Nebula Pro Nano camera. And for the receiver, it's just Crossfire, it's Crossfire Nano. I do plan to change it out to Express LRS uh, in the future, but for now it's just gonna be Crossfire. The final weight when put together is about 70.4 grams without the props and the battery. All up weight is 112 grams uh, with props and at a, with a 450 milliamp hour 3S battery. It is uh, not the 100 gram target that Kebab wanted this thing to be aimed for, but that was analog and this is digital. So with digital the, with the digital stack it's a little bit heavier but honestly I, I still like it so first things first I'm gonna go over the negatives of this quad and the first thing the first drawback of this build is the cost when you're building an analog version yes is uh, definitely gonna be cheaper but because I built the, the digital version uh, the Cadex Vista and the camera alone is already a significant part or a significant expense of the build I'm gonna put down the, the cost breakdown mm, somewhere here the thing is, is like the rest of the parts, although comparatively cheaper to a five inch build, honestly, because of the Cadex Vista, it comes out the same price as a five inch. The, the total price I think for me was about 320 US dollars. And honestly, I, I can find like a Diatone Roma F5, a uh, five inch with the Cadex Vista as well for about the same price. Uh, the thing is, this thing costs as much as a five inch now. I mean, the low end five inch, but it's still at the same time, it's not something that you would want to lose and your heart might stop if you get it stuck in a tree which is leads me to the next point is that <laughs> this thing gets stuck in trees really easily the size of it is not that heavy if you crash into a tree the likelihood of it just having gravity pull it down and, and fall on, onto the ground is actually quite hard also because of the size and um, there is not a lot of place for a buzzer so if you do lose it in tall grass you, you, you probably can't you can't hear it there's no buzzer even if you emulate the buzzers with the motors um, it's not loud enough I can't really hear it. I'm kind of old too hence the color scheme hopefully this stands out in the grass so I can see it you know nice nice and bright and purple and not green and yellow yeah so that's how I got around it uh, the color just to make it more more obvious to be seen in in tall grass and in trees all right issue number three on this particular quad, the biggest problem that you will, you will experience is this vibrations that you will see, and it comes out as jello in the camera. And I suspect it's because of the long and thin arms on the TP3, and they tend to flex, right? They, they, they flex quite easily, and this can actually lead to a lot of vibrations in the frame, and therefore it becomes noise in the gyro, and then it starts to oscillate. Uh, what worked well for me was that I updated the flight controller to Better Flight 4.3 and then I used the mouse FPV presets that he does for the TP3. He also flies a nice TP3. Um, I've used default filtering. I did not use mouse FPV's uh, filters because they were a little bit too aggressive. And I used the Pickle Pod Canopy by Le Drone Club. And the reason why is because it looks cool and I think this is better than the previous canopy that I used. And last but not least, kill, to kill the low throttle oscillations, I had to use perfect props, 
which leads me to my fourth point about this the the downsides of this build is that you need to have perfect props every time um, i'm using gemfan 3016 or 3016 um, and these props are made of tissue tissue paper the thing about these props is like every every slight crash you come back chip every slight crash you come back missing even and the thing is is that you can't really fly with unperfect props on this build a friend of mine kelvin suggested i change this to hq props which i will do so soon uh, but because i bought so many of these props i'm just going to use them for now i go through these gem fan props faster than i go through soju at a k barbecue okay just down <laughs> So those were the four major issues I had that you may experience with this build. One is the price. It, it is very pricey because it's a digital build. Two, it uh, gets stuck in trees and you know, it's an expensive thing to get stuck in trees and it gets easily lost. Uh, three, it's um, low throttle oscillations. And finally, uh, four is the props. The props need to be perfect all the time. But then now I'm going to get to the pros and right, this, in spite of all of that, this is why I still like to fly this all the time. Number one, the best thing about this quad is the flight feel. It is a pocket rocket, man. This thing flies so well. My buddy Alex says it flies like a five inch. I wish my five inch flies like this. Okay, it is so responsive. Um, it's just very, very, very lightweight. It's a pocket rocket and it's amazing. I And I really like it. I know, I know flight feel is a subjective thing, but you know, I have two top spec like KISS Ultra Apexes behind me right now, and I love flying those as well, but I still bring this out every single time I fly those out. The second pro of this, this build is that those things behind me are really noisy and it alerts everybody around you and somebody, everybody knows that you're flying. This thing is small and quiet and it doesn't annoy anybody and it is absolutely whisper quiet. It is so fun to rip around the parks and not disturb anybody and not even disturb wildlife. And the cool thing is, is that if I want to just go out and fly this, I can pack my entire setup into a fanny pack and just go out and fly. And that's the thing that, that uh, for me, it's just, you know, being busy, you got work, you got kids, um, just having that short amount of time, let's say 30 minutes of your day, right? Just to pack it out, head out and just go fly and not worry about packing like, you know, my GoPro, my 6S batteries, all those other things that you need to prepare and just to go fly. This, this whole setup fits into my fanny pack. Unless I crash though, then I need to bring a stick to go poke it out of the tree. And that's that's another issue <laughs> and speaking of crashes speaking of crashes the, the best thing i have experienced so far with this build is the durability uh the this toothpick even though with the skinny arms i've yet to break an arm i i bought plenty of arms you know i was expecting to break them but i haven't broke them yet and i've flown them into trees into concrete into into car parks into into all kinds of structures uh, not a single dent on the motors maybe i've been lucky but um, this thing holds up very, very well. In conclusion, should you buy it? Well, first of all, I'd like to ask the question, who is this made for? Well, this is a lightweight pocket rocket for anyone who's looking to have some crazy amount of power to weight ratio. What is this? This thing is, this thing is just stupid. And yet they still want the same flight feel as a larger quad. Um, it is more responsive, uh, longer flight times and so much fun. If you're looking to bring this around, uh, uh, bring it along with you on a picnic, to the park, to the beach, or even your local multi-story car park, then I would say this is for you. So for me, it checks all the boxes, right? It's fun to build, even though yes, it's small, it's quite small, but you could put it together in an afternoon. Um, it is fun to fly, very, very fun. Uh, portable, easy, light to carry around. Uh, it's quite durable easy to maintain like everything is just here on the stack finally it is just again i'm gonna reiterate i love it so much it's really 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 fun um the biggest drawback for me is i think it's the price because this is this is a digital build i'm going to be building an analog build so i'll probably do a breakdown of that as well uh, but if you have already accepted that this is the reality of what quads cost like in 2022 then I would say just go on and get it if you can because this thing is a riot. It's an absolute riot. Well, thanks so much guys for joining me for another episode. Thanks for watching. Thanks for commenting or liking. Uh, thank you for su subscribing. If you have not subscribed, hope you please do. I make this kind of nonsense content all the time. And uh, yeah, and I hope to catch you in the next film.